Okay, so um, if if there's like an important event uh, that's coming up, uh, and there's perfectionism and there's fear, like, will I be perfect at the event, or will I be judged at the result at the event, or will I deliver um, deliver well enough in the event, which is important. You know, what, what can I do about those fears, those perfectionisms, those worries about things not going well? Well, from A Course of Miracles perspective, you can see that if there's something important, uh, uh, then that it's important to the ego. Uh, so, um, and The Course in Miracles says that, um, so The Course in Miracles would label it as a, a special or magical event. When 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 I meet special, go to special events or meet magical or special people, or you could say project higher power status onto a person or an event or a situation, or my ability to deliver a, an important speech because I think it's important and that other people think I, I gave a good enough speech, then what happens then is I'm in uh perfectionism and fear is ego you know i'm in a position of ego force you know i'm going to be trying to uh use fear and control and worry about it enough and prepare about it to death as a kind of forcing forcing confidence in the situation and hoping that i can impress people and that i'll know what to say and i'll, I'll prepare th prepare the speech to death or whatever it is so for me um I, I would do it the opposite way. I would try and make it, I would try and take all the projections and all the magic and all the specialness out of it uh, until it becomes a meaningless event. So from important to meaningless or, or not, uh, or, you know, so the things I would do if I'm 12 steps apart from step 10s and, and, and resolution of the fears and resentments through that, um, through the Course of Miracles, um, I could use all the all all the tools and many of the lessons, like uh, God is the love. Um, I could pray for a miracle to see the event differently. Uh, I could pray for a miracle to see it in truth. I could uh, God could uh, you know instead of the event, I could see peace. Instead of myself needing to perform well, I could see peace. Um, God is the love in which I forgive myself. God is the love in which I forgive everyone at the event. So. Those type of things will also, I'm not a victim of the event. I'm not a victim of what people think of me. I'm not a victim of being needing to be perfect. So those kind of, you know, all of the different lessons applying it will start to uh, remove the projections of importance and specialness that you place on yourself and those people and your ability to deliver at the event. Why do I say that? Because when, I mean, fear and perfectionism and control and wanting to look good in front of others. In my experience, uh, you could say from Dr. Hawkins, I'm in a low level of consciousness. And usually when you when I'm in a low vibration, things usually go actually worse. They become more, they become more unmanageable. It's almost like the vibration of fear and perfectionism control and overthinking makes things even worse. Uh, and then the more I do the spiritual work so that I'm in a state of flow, peace, observing, witnessing, then things flow out from a higher place. And it's not really my ego that's trying to orchestrate things. And usually I find that things go far better. And the way I sort of see it is um, when in, I mean, in that field where I'm not in the head and I'm not tracking everything and trying to be perfect in front of eyes, usually things go far far better so that's the difference as Hawking would say from coming from you know power versus force force is trying to control things from the level of the ego being in the head and ego emotions fear and control and and power is when the head is absent other ways to do that is self-inquiry um so let's say i'm feeling anxious i've got to deliver a speech and I think everyone's going to judge me and I've got to deliver a perfect speech in front of everyone or speak, you know, uh, I, I must make sure people don't know I'm a fraud. So I just have to say the right things and the clever things so that people like me. Well, then I'll think, OK, if I'm in this much fear around it and I think I need to be this perfect around it, who am I? What am I? Who is the me 
where is the me that's so afraid and needs to get everything so perfect? Where is that thing? Okay, I'll look inwards and I'll try and find the me. Uh, usually for myself, if I go, if I, as soon as I try and find the me that's actually worried about people judging me and not being able to perform, usually I can't find it. And then, uh, oh, the, I, can't, I can't seem to find the me that seems to be there. So I'll, I'll look harder and I go, this, there might still be a feeling of unease. So I'll go, what's observing the unease, even though they, I can't find a me that should be afraid. Okay, okay, uh, then I'll, I'll observe that. And then I'll, I'll suddenly relax. I'll go, actually, there isn't a me, and there isn't an event, and there, there's nothing happening. And then and then there's a huge relief. It's like, oh, that was a, like a, a big drama that I did. I was stuck in the idea that that was a me there that's supposed to be frightened of delivering properly. And when I look and I can't find it, and I, I and then I observe the sensations or anything that's left there, then I realized there was nothing ever to worry about, and there's nothing, there's no, nothing, nothing to get concerned about. So I can, I can by going to the, by trying to find the me that's got coming up with all this stuff for the future. When I can't find it, I just silence, or just peace, or just there's nothing there. Usually, then in in the place of nothingness, a huge weight is removed, and it's kind of like a relief that I don't need to be a me that's worrying about this stuff. And my experience is that infinite place handles the situation miraculously well. The right people, the right the right words, everything flows. If I, as long as I stay in that place of of um, of not being a me, of no me. So, um, and I I mean Hawkins described it intellectually. You know, if I'm in the head and in fear, then things will be more chaotic and or more unmanageable. Why is that? Because uh, basically, when me is not there, the ego is not there. I mean, it's God speaking, and God orchestrating, and God's life sh shining forth into the into the environment. Everyone's going to be happier, and the words are going to be better. So the absence of me will handle a difficult situation far better than me, the ego me, trying to handle the situation. So you can do cancelling of beliefs, step tens, self inquiry. Uh, feeling the feelings. If you're feeling like terror in the body, just uh, allow it to be and don't label it until it just evaporates. Then you'll find your perception of the thing will be like, you can't be fearful of an event if you let all the fear out. So you'll see it from a higher level of consciousness and it will seem much more friendly. You won't be able to think about it so much because there's no heavy emotions there to, to pull you down. And those would be the ways I resolve it. Uh, actually, when I on a practical level, uh, when I was writing my book, um, and I had to actually write words down, the way I'd write the words down was I'd probably meditate or go to the observer, clear that clear any ideas that I had to write anything useful. And once everything was dissolved, I'd put the clock on for five minutes and write stuff down. And that's how I got my book down. So more like ne never trying to write when in my head, but really trying to go into the absence of head and then allow some writing and when the head comes back in, I'd stop writing because I knew that was then um, my ego trying to write the book, which I uh, which would probably be a very bad book. Okay.